Our Earth is an extraordinary thing. We take it for granted that the many multitudes of nature can lead to infinite possibilities of creation. Life can spring forth from myriad facets of the natural world, whether it's the smallest, most resilient of weeds, or whether it's an entire economy of a coral reef at the bottom of the ocean bed. But just as nature can give life, it can just as equally destroy it. And one of the most destructive forces on this planet is that of the hurricane. And just like all of the most terrifying forces of nature, Obviously, it has a slidable categorized scale of destruction. So let's hypothetically turn it up to the maximum and see just how things would turn out. Hello, Internet. What's going on? And once again, welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. As per usual, I'll be your dismodded floating voice, Jack Finches. Today, we curiously ask the question Are category 10 hurricanes possible? Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that scene was of course from the 1996 rip-roaring thriller Twister, starring the late great Bill Paxton in one of the most thrilling and memorable disaster movies of the 90s. Really that movie is awesome and really give it a watch if you haven't, but Come on guys, we've got to address the flying cow in the room. Those two would not have stood a chance if they were standing that close to an F5 tornado and they would have been picked up quicker than a precious piece of Lego to a vacuum. And yeah, exactly, you know what I'm thinking, right? If that's a F5, what the hell would a category 10 look like? Well, before we do that, you may be thinking, hold on a minute, twister, hurricane, tornado, uh, am I missing something? They're three different things, right? And no, don't worry, they're the exact same thing. Kinda. Essentially, a hurricane, which is perhaps the most common term you'll hear in the news, particularly if you're of the North American variety, are a weather system that forms over water. In Australia, they're called tropical cyclones. In America, hurricanes. And sometimes in Asia, typhoons. All of these form over warm waters when the sea's surface temperature is above a certain parameter. Typically, they are hundreds of kilometers in diameter. They last for many, many days, and they are unrelenting in their devastation. So what about a tornado? Well, they're pretty much the same thing, just instead they form over land and are pretty much a little less severe than the typical hurricane, typhoon, tropical cyclone, whichever name you prefer. And a twister, well, that's just another nickname if things weren't clear enough already. Okay, now that that's cleared up, let's poke our head beneath the ocean waves and take a look at just exactly what is stirring within its currents. Currently, the answer to this question is remarkably simple. No, on a technical level, it is impossible for a Category 10 hurricane to form. Why? Well, simply, it doesn't go that high. Yeah, it always sounds like a boring retort, but technically speaking, Category 10 hurricanes are not possible, simply down to the fact that the maximum is Category 5. And while that may sound like a bit of a cop-out when it comes to the hypotheticals of this given question, bear with us for a moment, because there's actually a pretty illuminating reason behind that. As our current understanding dictates, hurricanes are measured by a meteorological function known as the Saphir Simpson scale. Essentially, this scale classifies any storm system that exceeds the intensities of tropical depressions or tropical storms into five categories, each distinguished by the intensities of their sustained winds. As you may imagine, categories one, two, three, four, and the largest and most destructive, five. To be classified as a hurricane, a tropical cyclone must have one minute maximum sustained winds of at least 74 miles per hour. Yeah, that's category one, a hurricane that can rip the leaves off of trees, damage windows through debris, but for the most part are relatively straightforward to weather. A category three hurricane, on the other hand, harbors winds between 111 and 129 miles per hour and are entirely capable of ripping the roofs from the sturdiest of homes and are more than capable of ripping trees straight out of the ground by their roots. Entirely and utterly devastating. And then a category five, well, a category five wipes everything away. That's it, destruction, nothing can survive. Essentially, it cleanses the earth, trees, buildings, rocks, beaches, rivers, nothing can stand in the way of a category five hurricane. But you see, this is where the technical aspect of this question reaches its limit. Because no, from a technical perspective, category 10 hurricanes are not possible. On a physical level though, 
Yes, they are entirely possible and worryingly still, we may soon need a reason to raise the Sapphire Simpson scale up a few notches just to accommodate them. Roughly speaking, if a theoretical category 6 hurricane would have to exceed wind speeds of at least 180, anywhere up to 200 miles per hour, then a category 10 hurricane would have to peak anywhere between 260 and 280 miles per hour. That is staggering. In fact, one of the deadliest and most powerful tropical cyclones ever recorded, Typhoon Haiyan, that devastated portions of Southeast Asia in 2013 and at some points exceeded speeds of over 195 miles per hour, which as you may imagine is dangerously close to the category 6 parameters that we're outlining right now. However, to put a category 10 hurricane into perspective, it would rival if not exceed the power of some of the most destructive tornadoes ever recorded, similar to the F5 tornado that occurred in Wichita, Kansas back in 1991 that tragically killed 17 people. It is believed that inside that storm, readings indicated the winds were roughly around 270 miles per hour. So yeah, a hurricane would be more powerful than that, just instead of the relatively small size of a tornado, it would instead be, well, probably the size of an entire US state. Take Hurricane Katrina for example, which covered an area half the size of Texas and you may get an idea as to the overwhelming size and power of this unprecedented force of nature. It would be a force of nature the likes of which our earth has never seen. If it hit any major city, it would kill or injure tens of thousands of civilians, just as a category 5 would, but on a much, much larger scale. The thing is though, for us to ever witness a storm of such impossible magnitude, sea temperatures would have to exceed over 32 degrees Celsius across a massive swathe of ocean at the same time as an immense tropical wave occurred in that very specific area of water. Now rest easy because the likelihood of that happening is very slim, but if that were to happen, then yeah, we needn't worry too much because things would have already gotten really, really bad. Like, oh, I don't know, the polar ice caps have already melted and released all of their stored greenhouse gases that have been captured beneath the permafrost for hundreds of thousands of years. Oh, wait a minute. Doesn't that sound like, yeah. Exactly. Although Category 10 hurricanes are extremely unlikely, even with our current pressing climate crisis, Category 6 and perhaps even Category 7 hurricanes are becoming a much more impending reality. Back in 2017, Hurricane Patricia reached maximum sustained winds of over 215 miles per hour as it careered its way across the eastern Pacific Ocean. Again, an unprecedented moment in meteorology. Perhaps we'll have to take a look at the scale once again and redefine just how immensely powerful Mother Nature can and certainly will be. Well there we have it, our long and short answer to the question, are Category 10 hurricanes possible? Technically speaking, no. Physically speaking, yes, yes they are, and I guess we better batten down the hatches. Mm. Well, what do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree, have any more to add? Then let us know. Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below, as well as any intriguing insights that you may have on the matter. Before we depart from today's video, if you'd like to carry on with your questioning binge, then please take some time to take a look at our neatly compiled playlist, arranged for all of your hypothetical adventuring needs. On that note, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just life's biggest questions in general, then please be a dear, hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe out, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied floating voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching life's biggest questions, and until next time, you take it easy. Thank you